Hey everybody. Today we're going to take a look at this uh, 1966 Dodge Coronet that I have here. I've had this car for oh, over 20 years. My son's 22 and I got it right about when he was born or before, right around that time. 1999, 2000, something like that. So anyway. So anyway, I'll just uh, show you what this thing is. It isn't anything really special. It's not a show car, it's just a driver. This is the first time I've had it out in like two years. I may have drove it once last year, but we decided to take it out. It's 4th of July here, um, 2021. And I just thought I would come out and do a video of this little car since I got it all cleaned up and out here and running. So let's take a look at it. So you can see it's a, it's a 1966 Dodge Coronet 500. It's got the 15 by 7 cop car wheels on it and just some BF Goodrich TA radials with the blacks out. Some dog dish, stainless steel dog dish hubcaps that I bought from a Mopar buddy of mine, Dale. Um, those are basically the same ones that are on Jay Leno's 66 Hemi Coronet. So um, this is the color it was when I got it, but this is a different paint job. Um, I actually crashed this car and had to do a bunch of work on it. The, the top is the same. Like I said, this is nothing special, but you know, it's it's a driver and it's a, it's a pretty fun car. You can see the bodywork here is not that great. That it come, cracked out on me, but the grill is all here. You know, it's got the 500 grill on it. The bumperettes. It's all nice and straight, and it's in pretty darn good shape for an old car. But like I said, it's not a show car. And of course, I didn't put the chrome pieces. You know, I have I have all the chrome pieces that go around the trunk here, but I thought it looked pretty cool without it, so I left them off. So we'll take a look at the interior of this car. So I ordered all this stuff up from year one. Uh, about 15 years ago when I redid the interior, put a carpet kit in it, and I reupholstered it with new buns. I just painted the dash with some bomb cans, and uh, yeah, so the seats are all in pretty good shape in here. The back one, I did not replace the buns. I just basically put the new covers on it. So that's all in pretty good shape. I can see my carpet's pulling loose over there. I haven't noticed that before. Like I said, I haven't had this thing out for a couple of years, but I took it out today and washed it all up. Decided to take it for a little ride. We went out and did a couple burnouts. You know, I, uh, I used to put two kids booster seats back here when my kids were little, and we used to go out and do family burnouts in this car. Maybe we'll go out and do a burnout today. Let's take a look at this engine here. So when I bought this car, it had a 383 in it. There we go, one-handed. When I bought this car, it had a 383. This is a 440. It's actually the third, third 440 I've had in it. First one was an old, out of an old New Yorker, blew that one up. Then I had a HP one in here and it got blown up. And this one is a motorhome engine that I got. Uh, from SNS Lawnmower, it's a place here in Burien. It, we wheeled it home, and actually, my buddy Dale kind of did a Krylon rebuild on it, and he sold it back to me for 130 bucks. And I've had it in here for about four or five years now, so that seems to work out pretty good for this old car. It's all I need. I'm not a real race guy, but there's the 440. Let's take a look in the trunk. Planes going overhead there. This little park here is directly underneath the uh, the the uh, airport landing path. 
So I got my spare tire, just got a piece of carpet I fit back here. Got the jack. So, you know, over the years we've harvested a bunch of these old cars. I have actually three other 440s and the 383 that came out of it, rat hold in the shop, and a couple of transmissions. I have another front fender for it. I have another hood for it. I have a set of doors that go on it and a trunk lid. So I have a lot of parts for this car. So when I crashed it, you can probably see right here, I had to cut this. Basically this corner here got smushed in. So I cut this uh, frame out, this radiator bracket and replaced all the grill and replaced the hood. I replaced the outer, I replaced the outer fender and the inner fender. So I cut out all them spot welds and replaced all that and got it back in pretty good shape. So well, that's pretty much my 1966 Dodge. Let's get in and go for a little ride. I'm an old rattle wagon. So I was real surprised this morning when I I hooked up the battery because when I store it, I unhook the battery and just let it sit out in the garage. And I was real surprised this morning at um, how easily it started up. Seems to run great. I checked the oil, the oil's good. Checked all the vitals, transmission fluid, radiator fluid, power steering fluid. Everything looks good. So I really didn't do much to it today except for give it a little bit of a bath. And so. does slip a little bit going from second to third if you're at a high rpm i just kind of let off the gas a little when i know it's going from second to third let's go find and see if we can find a place to do a burnout considered myself a serial burnoutist so let's just take a look not a totally big patch but that's me baby all the way right there <laughs> oh yeah I left some rubber on the road <laughs> 